Our laws as it pertain to substances are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic. Because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin, ridiculous <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell do you think I learned that? I'm just saying, you go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it, I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. Hey everyone, welcome. We are anticipating Dr. Monica Gandhi joining us uh, probably at the bottom of the hour, uh, though she might come along here a little bit sooner. Uh, we will take calls from Clubhouse, and I'm watching you all on Restream as well. Uh, I've got a lot of interesting questions for Dr. Gandhi. I don't know if you all have, uh, I know some of you have, but I still continue to recommend her podcast with Dr. Peter, Peter Atia and Z Dog. It's called The Drive. And, um, and there's a third. Uh, doctor in there, Marty. I'm blanking on his last name right now. A guy from Johns Hopkins, but they really just go over the facts. They just go over the data. You know, it's a fact. Doctor Drew bobbleheads. All right. So Susan, Susan is very um, interested in this product. Hold it up being higher. Successful. It's okay, not on the okay. screen. It's being held up. Being held up. So they're still available at drdrew.com/shop. Make sure you uh, head on over there for your. Uh, gift giving for valentine's day you should be like a salesperson on qvc or it's something coming up we got it i i don't know if you don't order it but you know today then you may not get it in time ah, so. for Mon for valentine's day mm -hmm, got mm -hmm. it got it got it uh one of the things uh and by the way caleb how also, you doing part of the proceeds go to hillside's children yeah. foster so care. let me give a uh, go to hillsides.com if you want to uh, oh dr gandhi's coming on in now uh, but Hillsides is a wonderful organization for severely abused and traumatized children. It's a therapeutic living environment. There's a school. There's cultural activities. There's just they just do the. If we could only do that with all kids that have been hurt that way, we would be in much, much, much better shape in this country. Uh, so we will have Dr. Monica Gandhi here in just a moment, and uh, we will get right. Yeah, Dr. M Marty McCary. Thank She's you. She's pretty savvy. Thank on you, the, uh, Sanchez. The video chatting. Oh, absolutely, so. absolutely. Uh, and we, we, are you going to Susan laws? We're just chatting it up, waiting for Dr. Gandhi. Uh, are you going to get any bobbleheads for any and Nadav going? Uh, they have one in the studio. No, 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 no. Of them. Oh, of them. Oh, I don't know. I, this will is the first time you're talk. understanding that's what we were talking about. Oh, uh, okay. We were talking I, about you making one of those two. How about Tom and Christina too? And I think that those, well, the, the boys, the booth boys have agreed booth to it. Booth boys would be amazing. We, they have agreed to it. And okay. Yeah, so I mean, uh, it's up to the people that are are making them if they want to do it. Uh, I don't. Is I don't Alana see here? Is Alana? Yeah, Alana's in the clubhouse, so you can, uh, she's, Alana, go on a restream and give us a sort of a neutral, positive, or negative review of that plan. Uh, <laughs> no, any would not block me. No, we no, could, any proved it. We could it. get them ready for Father's Day. <laughs> all right or mother's let, day let me um <laughs> hmm. there's all kinds of things we could think of to do with that but uh let's bring in dr monica gandhi again she's professor of medicine associate division uh of uh let's see clinical operations education the division of hiv infectious diseases global medicine as ucf at ucsf san francisco general hospital she's also a medical director of the hiv clinical clinic at san francisco general hospital uh, Dr. Gandhi has been in the news for various reasons, and she is uh, one of my favorite followers on Twitter. You can follow her at Monica Gandhi Nine. Dr. Gandhi, welcome back to the program. Uh, thank you. There you are. So, listen, I, I appreciate you coming back. I really wanted to get you back here just for a minute to sort of give you a platform in long form to kind of, I, I don't know how else to say it, but give your side of the story. It, it seems like you were under attack lately in the media, and it was deeply, deeply, deeply troubling to me. Uh, a lot of got you BS and a lot of nonsensical circumstances where you couldn't respond. So I just wanted to give you a chance to kind of put it out there in, in, the, in the sense that you understand what had happened and what you'd like to say about it. Yes. I mean, I appreciate that. <laughs> I actually think a lot of people are being attacked right now, but... Um, uh, and I don't even want to go into the particular interview because, uh, but it was essentially, um, yeah, kind of a bullying um, attack where I wasn't allowed to respond. Things were taken, statements were taken out of context. And importantly, I think there seems to be 
a minimal understanding of immunology in our discussion about COVID and about mm -hmm. cellular immunity. And if I think of anything that I've done during this pandemic, I think there's been two. One is talking about cellular immunity in a way that people don't have to think it's just antibodies. And the second is I have talked a lot about schools and children and the fact that they're lower risk. And that's really okay. In fact, it's a blessing of COVID. Um, but the oh attacks God. on Twitter, yeah. <laughs> but the attacks on thank Twitter you, thank have God, become, yeah. thank God. I mean, actually, Perry Wilson wrote a piece for Medscape that said there were three blessings of the pandemic. It, it's, it was a disaster, but there were three blessings. And one was that the vaccines work well. The second is that mm -hmm. children are lower risk um, because mm -hmm. the reason that was so important is that if it had been the other way, which measles, mumps, pertussis, diphtheria, polio, almost everything else uh, goes the other way, this is just a, a random aspect of the biology, it would have been even more tragic. Um, and then, oh my the, God. The oh, the, then it would out. have been everything. So many things would have been appropriate that we did that were just useless and unnecessary and damaging, frankly. Yes. But, um, yes. yeah, I saw that interview and, and the, and I will, I, I came away thinking, Oh, I want to tell Monica two things. A don't do print interviews where somebody's interviewing you just write your essays. Do not let somebody interview you in the public okay. press. Trust me. They okay. will do the same <laughs> thing that that, that asshole did. Okay. okay. And, and number two if he, the guy only had made only one point, which was which you addressed, which was addressing your predictions around India, and I want to give you a chance to bring that back again, and everything yeah. else, you literally would have to go, excuse me, let's take it headline by headline so I can explain that list of bullshit that you just laid out without giving me a chance to respond. I was fu furious beyond furious watching that interview. I can't even imagine <laughs> it. But w w why did you get well, a chance to... to kindness, yeah. Oh. Oh my yeah. God! So what but he is, uh, yes, how? So how like, let me let me go a little further. How? Who is that asshole? Okay. How dare he? Who does he? Who does he think he's talking to? You know what I mean? How dare he? What an idiot! So anyway, enough. Okay, but, right but, to but address the. I am me. I am. Yeah. <laughs> <He's right laughs> yeah. I had made. Go ahead. Mistake. I had made a big mistake in the pandemic, which in February of 2021. There was a seroprevalence study done in the slums of India that looked like the seroprevalence mm -hmm. was quite high. That is actually true of like Queens, for example, uh, and poor areas had higher seroprevalence, but it didn't reflect the seroprevalence in the general population. And I thought India had more immunity than it did, and Delta hit it terribly. And when I wrote that, I when I realized that, I actually apologized very formally four or five times on Twitter, deleted the tweet. So to bring that out was sort of bullying, I think. And then everything else, yeah. I mean, everything else I've talked about really is about immunity and the lower risk of children. Again, thank God. And, and you have been clear mask advocate all the way along until it became yes. insane, uh, <laughs> until yes. it became absurd, uh, which is the situation we're in now. Um, the, le, let me, we'll get into more of that, but I, I want to ask a question that I've noticed. I wonder if you've noticed. You, you mentioned how much more uh, unbelievable this thing would have been if it had affected children, say the, or even young adults, say the way the 1918 flu did. I've noticed amongst pediatricians, there are a lot of them that are scared uh, in a way that, and I just realized, I, I talked to Dr. Peter Hotez last week, and he's great, but he started talking about his fear of neurological sequelae from, uh, from COVID. And I thought, Oh, you're you're a pediatrician. You don't even understand adult neurology. I if as I stand here right now, I'm scared of Lewy body dementia. That scares the hell out of me. I've had COVID yeah. twice. I am not scared about COVID neurological sequelae at all. And so they're weirdly fearful of adult consequences because they are pediatricians. And a lot of the virologists and and people that are in the sort of epidemiology are pediatricians. Head of the state of California is a pediatrician. And they don't have good judgment about adult consequences. I, I, I found that to be kind of interesting recently. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think that's a great point that you just made. I think the way that I would think about it is that we as adult physicians have seen tragedy and uh, children physicians really, no child should die. And actually no child should right. die. Um, but that's in right. a pandemic and, and, and in, in or with heart disease or cancer, these tragedies do happen. And I wrote a piece with a in Time magazine with a um, 
pediatrician urging the child vaccine saying, if we had a vaccine against cancer, we'd do that too. But you can't, mm -hmm. the fact that, that so many fewer children died, 803 out of our 900,000 Americans um, killed by the pandemic is an amazing blessing. And again, it is this idea that we don't want to um, flip the restrictions such that children are more restricted in a pandemic than adults. And that, that failure to risk stratify in the United States led to our schools being closed longer than they were in uh, Europe, UK, um, or any uh, country of our sort of economic status. So, um, so I think that pediatrician driven idea that we need to be able to risk stratify, we need to keep children safe. I believe in child vaccines, all of that, but we also have to, when we're thinking of big blunt instruments for society, that we uh, want to ensure that we think about risk stratification when we bluntly um, uh, use NPIs in society. Right. And uh, so just to put a little, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we do have a cancer uh, vaccine, the HPV vaccine. And Monday, we'll, maybe we'll have a melanoma vaccine as a therapeutic. These things are happening for cancer, so it, it's These coming. Happening. Hepatitis B, um, too, in a way, avoids liver cancer, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, right. And, well, I want to talk about therapeutics and things, too. I think about hep C and therapeutics. But but um, you were in a, an amazing podcast with uh, Dr. Z-Dog and uh, Marty, I'm blanking on his name already, uh, and Peter, Peter Atia. Atia. Where, yeah. yeah, where Peter did this very clever analysis of risk stratification for young people, uh, COVID being the sort of unity number relative to other serious causes of death in certain age groups. And in every age group under the age of 35, suicide, homicide, accidents, overdoses were somewhere between five to 10 times more serious risk factors of death than COVID. And yet zero sense in the public that that is the case. I think zero, less sense in the United States than again, other countries. Because if you look at our colleges, for example, fully vaccinated colleges, uh, uh, kids or young people are still being quite, um, kept under a lot of restrictions, lots of testing, masking, isolating in their rooms. That isn't, that isn't actually, I think we sometimes we have to go elsewhere. That isn't actually what's happening in other places. So this failure to right. risk stratify was more prominent in the United States messaging. And that I don't know if I can explain. Can you? I mean, I don't know. Uh, but yes, you're right. It got, some, all good it got weird. Scenario. It got weird and it got weird and political. They, the, the press refused early to give ages around death. A friend of mine pointed that yeah. in the first three months of the pandemic. He said, how old are these people are dying? What is their age? Why aren't they giving us the age? And literally, people in the public were going, oh, that's a HIPAA violation. You can't do that. Somebody was driving a narrative early, it, and it was weird. Yeah. Uh, by, the yeah. same, by the same token, again, there was, there was, there was you said something. That this is, this is the, to me, the really core issue. You had said something in the Atia podcast. I, I want to quote it exactly because it, it really... Um, got me. You called it, yeah. Why didn't health professionals drive the conversation about COVID? That to me was the astonishing, I, 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 I just, I took my breath away. I still, to this day, in this county, we have a sociologist, not a social worker, not a physician, not a clinician, not a nurse, a sociologist keeping kids masked. How, I just, I just look at that and I think, there's something fundamentally at, at d disturbed about our public health system and the people that are in those positions. Already, I've said, and I'm going to say something a little provocative, that the pediatricians, they're not making good decisions about adults. Sociologists making clinical decisions? How could she possibly? Uh, there's something really wrong. And then there appears to be you know, the messaging problem from the CDC, the fact that the CDC couldn't do RCTs around masks for two years? Why couldn't they have done that? And then poor Dr. Fauci getting roiled through all the politics. I mean, think about all those. I, I hope people look dispassionately at these problems because we have to solve them. We have to solve them. And also we have to do a response where both sides went wrong, right? Like right now, 
this bizarre thing is happening. Like yesterday, suddenly all the Democratic governors released masks. Um, and well, not all of them, but like Oregon, California, New Jersey, Delaware. And it makes it look really political where <laughs> they all do it on one day, like someone got a memo. Um, and instead, yeah. you know, we have to be clean, clear, metric based. Um, know the limitations of our data. I mean, what I also said on that podcast is that big population studies that are RCTs with masks don't show a great population level benefit. The Bangladesh RCT cluster randomized study was reanalyzed by multiple groups because they got the raw data and showed that kind of universal public masking didn't really reduce any transmission in this RCT. And then we have to know the limitations of the case control studies. And what I said there, and I really do believe it, is that I do believe masks. I have been propounding masks. At the beginning, I thought cloth masks would help reduce the severity of disease, which I actually think they did. There was a study from the NIH that they did maybe by humidifying air. But I'd so much rather have a vaccine to reduce the severity of disease than wearing a mask all day. Right. So I, um, so right. after, after, the, um, after the vaccines came out, that's not a good reason. If you want very little exposure, there are great masks, FFP2, KN95s, N95s, KF94s, double masking, uh, cloth with filter that you can wear to protect themselves yourself. But I think population level masking and mask mandates, when we know which ma everyone has different risk tolerances, doesn't quite make sense. And I, like you just said, a risk yeah. tolerance of a pediatrician or of Dr. Fauci or of Dr. Walensky or of me, or of you, or of dog, or Dr. Walker, none of that should drive public policy. It should just be on data, right. not someone's personal. Policy. That's right. That's exactly right. And, and but the people making the risk reward call should some be somebody with judgment, somebody who's done that a lot. Um, but uh, to Talking your point about, about mass, sort of to give people nothing wrong. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I was just oh saying God. there's nothing wrong about collateral damage of our of responses and trying to weigh oh. them. That's called reduction. That's all I've been doing in the pandemic is harm reduction. Yeah, that, that, it's just it's just trying to get the balance right, and we've not paid yeah. any attention to the ad, uh, medicine is all about unintended consequences. That that's all we yeah. look out for is we we make these therapeutic we take these therapeutic uh, uh, sort of paths. And we know there will be untoward consequences and we prepare for them and adjust for them and make sure that we've called it right on the risk reward analysis going down the path in the first place. But um, back to your mass thing, just so people understand the context, there were two randomized controlled trials, one out of Denmark, one out of Bangladesh. Bangladesh was highly criticized. It was something like 600,000 people. They opened the data. At that point, they were saying it had about a 15% effect. They opened the data. It turned out it had almost no effect, the masks. So, and everyone agrees, it showed that there's really no benefit to, to mask mandates. Population level, yeah. I mean, I do- Population I actually level. Really, yeah, I mean, I really do think that for anyone risk adverse, um, the mannequin studies, which I know have been made really fun of, but I actually really believe in them that if you like spray particles that look like droplets or aerosols, you can protect yourself uh, with yeah. with a close fitting mask. So I really do believe that. Oh, you can. Why, um, yeah, dad, I, I don't you think, well, believe, so you, you dad I don't think you have to use. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you have to wear you bring belief into it. There's good evidence that there's some reduction yeah. of exposure yeah. if you have a well-fitting mask. And and that's not a signal that you care about other people that is protecting yourself if you wish to do yeah. so. And so this idea that it's, oh, I yeah. care about other people. I care about other people. I have to wear a mask. No, zero, zero. It doesn't do that. It protects you. And if you want to be protected, by all means, please do so in adults particularly. And it has but become my, a talisman, yeah, of this of this fight that we're having right now. But it shouldn't be. It should just be data. Well, if you want to protect your software, well, for you, sure. Again, and Dr. Z Dog pointed out the religious nature of this weird sort of yeah. thinking that we're in where you're impure or you're you're a, a apostate or you're you know you're a sinner. And those kinds of thinking is uh, I, I, it makes me very, very worried about this. But I'm gonna ask a more provocative <laughs> question about masking and uh and uh, protecting yourself so when when um i started worrying about I, I wanted to move about and i started worrying about my vaccine status i i had alpha and then i had um um a j j and j vaccine about four months later and, and i actually had a very fancy profile it's called they're actually emer they're just trying to get emergency youth authorization right now for this profile where, they, where you get a full spectrum of igg iga igm of the nuclear capsid protein and various spike proteins and neutralizing antibodies and my stuff was 
off the chart. It was way up. I didn't need the vaccine, but I took it anyway. It was way, way, way up consistently. And it started kind of decaying over about a year. It started decaying a little bit. And I started wondering, mm, maybe I should get an mRNA vaccine or maybe another J&J or God, if Novavax or Covaxin, which I want you to talk about, comes out, maybe I would do that. And, uh, and then I thought... Maybe I should just get Omicron. That's probably a better, broader immunity for me. And, and I it's it's gonna be mild. I know it's gonna be mild. Maybe I should just get and then boom, I got Omicron. <laughs> then, I, then I got it. I got it from my son who That's came from New Johnson York. And the, what's that? Yeah, after the Johnson and Johnson, right? So Alpha I, I, Johnson. Nine Johnson, months, Johnson. nine months after it. Nine months after J and J. And I had a, I, I I you remember, but I had a terrible reaction to J and J. I yeah. developed raccoons' yeah. eyes and all kinds of crazy weird stuff. Yes. And, and uh, so I I was just worrying about being revaccinated, and then boom, I got Omicron. It was mild. I still have a I still have a cough four months late, four weeks later, and whatever. Uh, and um, but it starts to make me wonder. If being excessively obsequious about exposure may actually be the wrong approach, if this thing, per its evolutionary trajectory, is getting milder and milder, I kind of figure like I'll probably should have to get it again next year if I don't get it. I either get a vaccine or I get the Omicron again or whatever comes around next. How do we know what the right approach is for somebody with natural immunity and vaxxed? How do we know? We really don't know, do we? I don't think we know. I totally agree with you that um, your immunity was really good to your natural infection. Some people's aren't like maybe they had a really mild infection and they didn't create the, the B and T cells. So I still like recommending a dose after like you got after natural infection yeah. and sure. Giving I you do that too. That, and, and I started, and I started thinking about a third. I started thinking about another one because I, I want to, I you're, want, I don't want to get that thing again. It was bad. You're going to have to, because we're going to Bermuda. Right, right. Well, no, no. I'm I'm fully vaxxed now. Technically, they're gonna want a booster. I bet really? you. I bet. Well, other countries look at natural immunity. I could get my yeah. I could get my antibodies done. Yeah, yeah and it, they have some really tough laws in Bermuda coming back to the states. Well, I'll get my antibodies done. So, but it's a good question going. about this whole thing because I still would want hybrid. I unfortunately don't. I mean, I don't have hybrid in the sense that like I haven't gotten COVID yet, to my knowledge, but. But you're right, the super immunity hybrid that keeps on showing really strong immunity. But you still got it because I think that it's just super simple. Your antibodies go down with time. Your T cells and B cells protect you from severe disease. And you got a mild infection with Omicron. And then you just boosted your immunity yeah. big time with Omicron. Broad yeah. neutralizing antibodies yeah. across the whole virus. And you just yeah. did it again. Yeah. So it all depends next year if the virus is still, how much it's circulating. I mean, I think. I don't know yet. Like, I think it's going to depend on a new variant or not. But that is bringing us to this question of Covaxin because I, I don't know if we're going to, we shouldn't keep on giving the same mRNA vaccine with the same coding to the ancestral strain if we have another variant that's totally different. We may need to give the whole virus and let us see the whole virus, and that would be like a explain whole to people variant. explain to people what you mean because I feel I feel yeah. strongly that's the right approach. Explain what you mean. So the mRNA vaccines and the Johnson & Johnson all code for a little piece of the virus, the little piece of spike protein that sticks out from the virus and sticks to the host cell. And it worked. It was great. I think they're all great. Um, but they but they still are the spike protein against the old ancestral strain, the one before alpha, before even D614. It, it was this one circulating over the summer. So anyway, the ancestral strain, we call it. And you keep on giving that. You train your immune response to keep on recognizing the spike protein. But say we have a variant that comes out next that doesn't have 50 mutations like Omicron, but has 78, and there's lots on the spike protein, and they're all over the virus. I would want a booster that showed me the whole virus instead of just the spike protein. Yeah. And the yeah. whole, there are boosters with the whole virus. They're called, uh, Kilvaxin's the one, Ocugen, or it's made in India, but it is a, um, shows you the whole, it's a whole inactivated virion. It's like what we used to do, we used to yeah. kill viruses and then give them as vaccines. That's what they do. Yep. And um, yep. I like that idea of next year, this time, if the virus is still circulating at a high rate and we haven't seen Omicron like you have, because hopefully you've, you're you going to get, you've gotten immune across the whole virus from your alpha and your Omicron, that other that whoever wants to gets a booster with the whole virus vaccine. I I'm, I would consider it even myself just to kind of, I don't know, yeah. it sort of makes sense Let to me. It's, it's reasonable. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I keep looking at the I'll probably, or maybe I take a reduced dose or something. I, I don't know, but but I, wh why is Covaxin not coming here? I've been reading about it for four months, maybe six months. What's going I on? Actually, 
truly don't have any idea on that because um, it has been given out to, I think there's been 200 million doses in India given out. And they did put in an EUA to the FDA on November 5th. Um, but that's yeah. all I know about it because unlike what people yeah. say on Twitter, I'm not paid by any pharmaceutical company, <laughs> Pfizer, oh, Moderna, Vaccine. I'm not. It's so, I just like that. Are you? Eight? Okay, I have I have two more. I know you have to go in like three minutes, so I'm gonna, I have two more things I want to get to with you. Um, a therapeutics. What the hell? I am so desperate to get Paxlovid and uh, uh, Sotrovimab and even even just the more traditional mix of. Uh, the Regeneron stuff. I can't get anything for anybody. It's just, it's just, it's, I almost had a patient die. Young guy who was going south, clearly in need of monoclonal antibodies, couldn't get them because he didn't meet the criteria at that hospital, which was a checklist that was, I, I, it, it was so arbitrary and so disgusting to me. I, again, wh why, why do you need doctors? Just, just have, just to have the computer check the checklist. I mean, this is, this is insane. He was, he was going down and went down and just narrowly made it. And, uh, you know, mul oh, there is another question I have here, too. I have two more questions. Um, but what's going on? Are we going to get the therapeutics out? Where's Paxlovid? Where's Molnupiravir? It, it could make all the difference in the world. Yeah, I want Paxlovid and Molnupiravir even more. I mean, I like, I love the monoclonal antibodies, but they're so much easier to give. And if we, yes. during Omicron surge, had more, um, had the production of those ramped up, I think everything would have been different. Uh, actually, oh, of course, we would have course, we would have saved a lot of more people's lives. I don't oh. know if there. I don't know what happened. I, I have this like silly notion that like therapeutics were Republican and vaccines were Democrat, and they didn't work hard enough on therapeutics. I don't know. I mean, that's just this silly, but it's the same thing with T cells. Like every time I talk about T cells, people are like, "What? What T cells? Like is that Republican?" I'm like, "No, it's true." So, so I think. I think wow. that it's weird wow. wide, but wow. but I think we need to work. I know that's a, but it's true. Like like prevention and treatment in any infectious disease is critical, and we mm. we actually have a lot of other therapeutics coming out. We're always going to have therapeutics. There's going to be a new protease inhibitor, a new nucleoside analog. We got to ramp it up on the therapeutics. The the federal government bought three hundred thousand doses or something and distributed them. And nobody knows where they are. It, it's really, oh, uh, it's mind-boggling, mind-boggling. Oh, look at the website. They, Probably they, black they market. Them, they sent them to community health centers and certain pharmacies. Uh, gone. I had one right. patient, one guy on the clubhouse who might even be still there right now, who got one for his mother-in-law. He had to drive an hour outside of Sacramento. Uh, he found a pharmacy that had eight doses. By the time he got there, there was one left. And that was it. That was their distribution. How, why that wow. pharmacy, why there, nobody knows. So, so two more quick things. I know you got to get out of here. I mean, I can see people hoarding them, you know, I, a lot of doctors and, and it's not, and doctors aren't getting it. Well, I know they're not. Well, Monica says, can't get it. I can't get it. So yeah. one quick thing, a, a physiology question I have is you, in, in your conversation with Dr. Atia, you talked about the fact that Omicron doesn't penetrate the lung. It seems to get into the airways more than the lung. And all of a sudden I thought, I knew that bit. And I thought to myself, all of a sudden, is that the whole story? Because so many people that get into trouble in my world are in trouble because what really looks like endovascular disease and clotting and clotting in the lungs, and then a cytokine activation that is more widely distributed than just the lungs. So how does the difference between penetrating the airway and penetrating the lung create all that? Do you, do you have any answer to that? No, I totally actually agree with what you just said, that those six studies that showed it doesn't infect lung cells as well didn't mean it wasn't really severe in people who are unvaccinated because I think that fundamentally there's so much of viral pathogenesis with this virus that's immune mediated. It's actually why children mm. are so much more spared. There was a Nature article called the, the kids are all, the, the key to immunity, the key to children being spared is their immune response. And it's because their innate immunity doesn't fight them like we as adults. We fight the virus in a way that our immune system hurts us. It's why we give dexamethasone yeah. and steroids yeah. um, for treatment. So you're right. I don't think it's the whole story. And I think when I think about 1918 pandemic, yeah. it was really just increasing immunity with time that led to finally mm. going from pandemic to endemic. And I think we're just getting more and more immunity with time. In December 2021, way yeah. more immunity than we had in March with Delta. 
and and this endovascular process it, that that physiology needs to be much more completely sorted out. I, I don't I don't get it yet. Yeah. I can tell what you, my patient, I had one yeah. patient, I yeah, I had one patient with a pre-existing lupus anticoagulant and just gone in two days, just destroyed by the virus. And I thought, well, that's telling you something. There's something yeah. about this endothe endovascular endothelial activation with the cytokines. I, I you know, there's there's a lot of theories flying around, but one day we'll understand it. And then lastly, I'll let well, you go after you tell me one thing. No okay. Yeah. Say it, say, say it again. What's the, I didn't I catch your last comment. Though, you this many, we've never given this many immunomodulators for a viral disease. It is so much about the immune response. You know, there's so much to figure out about this yeah. virus. You're right. And, and I've done a lot of streams and podcasts on the various uh, theories around what we should and shouldn't be doing. It, it's it's uh, I, I've had well. I've had decent response to toxaluzumab and steroids lately, so I'm, I have some hope for that. So, uh, but you're my right. last question though like to you: yeah, we want to kill the virus yep. early, early on. Yep. That's why I like specific yep. antivirals. Yeah. Um, so my question to you is: now that you've been through this ridiculous uh, and unfair experience, do you? What are your private thoughts about social media and how doctors are being treated and the public health discourse? What What are your thoughts? What, what did you, did you learn anything? Are you disgusted? What are you feeling? I'm getting off Twitter. <laughs> it's that simple. I, uh, <laughs> so I think I should disseminate ideas and also not really ideas because I like to disseminate the studies. Like I keep on looking at studies and I'd like to put them in a different format, but I just think social media is a mess. So um, I'm getting off Twitter and it's feeling great so far. <laughs> Well, maybe I, I would urge you, you produce, you've been on fire on Twitter lately and your content has been so good. I've, I've been retweeting the hell out of everything. And, and I, please don't do that. Why don't you just write it on a piece of paper, have somebody else enter it and send it off to Twitter so you don't have to okay, read the I'll consequences. Of, well, let's just say my have, relationship with so, <laughs> okay, yeah. good. I, I'm all for that. But the material between <laughs> uh, between you and Vinay Prasad on Twitter is just such valuable material going out, and uh, I, I I can't thank you enough for that. It, you, you've been spending a lot of time. Can you doing explain it. what what she was being attacked about? <sighs> do you want to not? How would you describe? No, it? I, I really I, don't I, want. Is to it all because that's... of that? Yeah. One thing yeah. I want to say about that is there's um, one thing I've really tried to stay in this pandemic. Oh no! Oh no! Oh goodness! <laughs> oh, she was just going to tell you, Susan. Well, she had to go at three thirty. Oh Arizona. no! It's but, uh, the ghost if, is back. If she back. wants to come back and, and finish that thought, <laughs> please please let her do so. But she doesn't have to. I shouldn't have said um, that. Look what you did, Susan. Look at that. It's almost like she timed it perfectly to leave us hanging. There, right? There's there's a I know oh, she may have done some at a time. Oh, there, there's a there's a doesn't lot. that happen every time we lose her at the very end? Yes, yes. There's a lot more to talk about too. I could talk to a million different things with her in terms of some of the downstream effects. There's she an has article. A, she has a ghost that said it's time to go. Right. No, it's it's uh, she heard your question. It was like Ugh, enough already. No. So, I, <laughs> so, well, so essentially, I don't know what she she gets attacked on Twitter constantly for it was everything. Something to do as, with her son getting a not, not giving her getting, son a yeah, vaccine. Yeah, there was some of that. But it, it's, I it's all over the place. It's all over the place. It, I mean, you can't even as a mother make a decision and, and then you have to take shit for it. Like, yeah. And then this <sighs> this one guy on this, he was a British guy, I think, just a, just really was just ridiculous. There was not an interview. It was just a bullied attack. Oh. And she just stood there going, okay, I apologize on the India thing. And I thought, oh, this is just ridiculous. Oh. It's terrible. Um, yeah, but, but at least she's willing to come on here and talk about this yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's not th that meek that she won't continue. We'll have her back. There is interesting data now. I'm just just now published that uh, saying that cardiovascular. I want to I want to shit on Barbara Farrar today. Cardiovascular disease is up, and whether that that has anything <laughs> to do with lack of screening, lack of attention, or maybe something to do with uh, COVID or the, even the vaccine. Speaking of which, Go ahead. I, I want to attack somebody yes. on Twitter. Go ahead. Barbara Farrar and her mask mandate, even though the state of California says that we can stop yeah. the mandate. Yeah. Now, why can't we just decide if we want to wear a mask on our own? If, you, if you're if you compromised or you're not vaccinated or you just feel better walking around with a mask on in the mm -hmm. middle of broad daylight, mm -hmm. fine, go ahead. But to mandate it for everybody. Oh, wait, she's coming back. Oh, she's coming back. Okay, let's hear it. Let her finish her thought. In just a moment. Okay, you can just bring her, bring her in whenever she's ready. That's all. She needs to, uh, we'll start I'm over. Some of the new publications Cut here. Cut to. <laughs> no, I just I couldn't believe it, and I'm 
you know, I don't know why we keep people in office who are detrimental to public health, like, like mental beyond, health. Beyond. And who have mental health problems, like clearly. Beyond. There's no doubt in my mind. My um, box is too small. Get here's a new, <laughs> Or make mine smaller. <laughs> I want a bigger box. Here's another uh, <laughs> vitamin D deficiency linked to severe COVID. This is a new study. And vitamin D deficiency is a link to, to not being healthy generally. It's uh, obesity, other kinds of advanced age things. Uh, so I, I, I don't know what to make of all the vitamin D stuff. It's not specifically, vitamin D is a, an ancillary finding. So let's get Dr. Gandhi in here to finish her, give her final thoughts, as we say. <laughs> She's thoughts. logging in uh, still. I'll put her on screen okay. as soon as she's back. Why? Uh, let me look at you guys. Uh, I on, like Zoom better. Uh, I'm looking at some of you guys on the restream here. But Susan, you know, I, I yesterday, or it probably was yesterday when uh, the California State no, uh, announced that they yes. were going to get rid of mandates on February 15th. Again, why that date? Why not today? I mean, what, <laughs> yeah, what, what are we going to do in this next week? What's exactly? going to happen in yeah. a week? But okay, February 15th. <sighs> and I said, thank you. And then Alex Michelson then then tweeted breaking news, not L.A. County. Oh. And I was like, what? 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 No. I, can't, I, I was in uh, total disbelief. I could it's not believe it. It's just insanity. It's insanity, yeah. It's insanity. I mean, I, I, we need to be free. It's Look, you know. we've been doing poorly in Los Angeles anyway. Mask or no mask. We yeah. do, it doesn't make a difference. I don't think the numbers are not that much difference in, different in, in states that have no mask Cor mandates. They're not different correct? at all. That's like the it's whole like point. they're the curve is the same. That is the point. The virus does what the virus does. I've been yeah. saying that for a long time. And we need to get it. It made it made sense. And we're gonna get it anyway. It made sense in doing a lot of things. We were trying to temporize this to get the vaccines, to get the therapeutics, to learn more about it. It, it made sense, even though most of the transmission was in the home, it still made sense to try to do what we could, even though there are the excesses and the incompetence, closing beaches and horse trails and parks. That was disgusting incompetence. Okay, on full display. Same people still in charge. I like Tim Grover. Oh, Susan, that would mean our globalist oligarchs wouldn't be able to lead us around by the nose if we got to choose on our own. And that, you know, it does feel like that. It's it just feels like it, but there there should have been a proper balance where public health could do their job. They have a certain amount of police authority. I understand that. But the the decision making was arbitrary, not based on any science really at all. The science came two years later. And yeah, it just but was too much. We're all vaccinated much. now. I've been vaccinated and, and three vaccinated. times and I had Here's COVID. A, let me. Here's a a piece of data that boosted Americans are 97 bullshit. times less likely to die of COVID than unvaccinated. I had mine on today because I didn't have any makeup on, and I went to the tanning salon, and um, the woman picked up her mask and put it on for me. I went, "Oh, don't worry, you can keep it off. <laughs> I just don't have any makeup on today." <laughs> okay, here we go. She's okay, back. so Monica, you want to finish? I'm thank you for coming back. Do you want to finish your final? I thoughts? just wanted to finish my thought. Is that? Um, what yes. you just said on Twitter that's happening and in that interview and so forth is we should have civil debates. And I think that um, one thing we should all try to do is, is be more civil to each other. This has been an incredibly hard time. And that's actually why I don't even want to really talk about this much because I want to <laughs> keep above board, keep civility. That's how we should be talking to each other. And then we can do a post-mortem analysis of this entire response and say, look how mean we were to each other. But <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absurd. But 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 I do, I would urge you to keep walking forward with your head held high. That's also part of not engaging with the incivility because you have Thank important you. things to say. Just just keep saying it. Just keep saying it. Don't look, you know, have somebody else post it and don't look at it. That's good. I like that policy. But <laughs> okay, but please like keep that. keep saying it because that's that's the only way. Otherwise, they win. All that incivility wins. It actually actually yeah. stifles an important voice in, in the discourse. And we, especially right now, when people are kind of confused, it, you guys or you guys just keep keep putting it out there. And, and I, there's you know, nobody leading anymore. Like it just sort of went well, flat. Well, let's put it this way: you and Vinay have been, and Peter have been able to say these things. I, the, of course, there's a vortex that swirls around it. But a year, year and a half ago, you couldn't you couldn't say it. You couldn't even say it. You would have lost yeah, your job. True. You would have been who that's knows true. what from the state. There would have been people encumbering your license. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that was happening 18 months ago. It wasn't just incivility. It was guillotines. 
And now it's just incivility. So let's call that improvement. Yeah, we haven't had a strike in let's a while. Let's call that even after Dr. It's Kelly. It's getting better, Monica. No, it's wait, we, we want to keep the <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> All right. You we want the peace. We want the dialogue. We want the love. Bye-bye. We'll let Monica <laughs> go. She's over, over, overdone it uh, 12 minutes over her, her time frame. She's nice. Uh, and what did you say, Susan? You want to what? We we want to keep the peace and the love. You know, yes, it's yes. she's right. Peace and love, peace and love is. I mean, uh, we've always been Ringo like Starr that. Ringo Starr says, you know, peace and love, peace and love. I mean, you've you've admitted you were wrong when you had to, sure. and it. I mean, a lot I, of people are doing that lately. I don't know if you noticed that, but it seems like everybody's yeah, admitting it, it, they were. I thought, wrong. I thought, you know, their people are saying that they shouldn't. Well, let, let's you and I talk about this, Susan. People are saying that they shouldn't. Um, Admit they're wrong. Admit they're wrong, and there and that's a that is has been in response to Joe Rogan's uh, apologies, which I thought were both good. People told me that you shouldn't have admitted I, I, you're wrong, but we we made that choice because because look, I don't, I never mind admitting when I'm wrong. Uh, now the reality was people didn't understand quite where I was wrong, and I didn't want to spend a lot of time explaining it. We'll see. You'll see it more clearly when the dust settles from everything. I was really. I was wrong in, in I was right in principle that the panic was going to occur to create real serious trouble and that we should be looking to the CDC and Dr. Fauci for our guidance. That was what I just kept saying. Kept no, saying I know, but lately, saying. like what were we watching? But, and some people were just admitting they're wrong left and right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that, uh, well, that's it's like mostly the around new, Joe Rogan. The so new so trend. Let's, let's talk about that for a second. And so so I missed the infect, you know, the math of the infectivity and then the vi the the cytokine storm and all that stuff. I didn't fully understand, grasp that, but I quickly got to it. In fact, I changed my tune completely the day that Dr. Fauci said, this is not the flu, trust me, this is something different. Boom, I changed right then because I was using him as my North Star. Now, you could argue about you know what happened in the bureaucracy and the sort of messaging and what a mess it became. It did, it did. We still would have been better off just listening to those guys than the press and the nonsense and the governors and the county officials that have sociology degrees. And we would have been much better off, much, much, much. That's that's where I was right. Even, yeah, but we even when they got stuff wrong, we would be better off. We were so, doing everybody's just yelling at each other. Yeah. So well, anyway, so back to Rogan. So so he had two issues. He had the use of the N word that that was as his, as he described it. And they made a somebody made a video with mm -hmm. outtakes, just like they did for you. Rep, but you know, little outtakes of you saying stuff out of context. Not like to, that, though. To thank ruin God. You. No, okay. I know, but it's yep. it's the same. I know the feeling. It's terrible. And he just said, "Look, that was reprehensible. It looks bad to me. I never should. It's I'm, I've learned. No, yeah, yes. And and to me, I keep saying this. We need to have a bigger conversation about. Again, this 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 word is not quite right, but white what I call white supremacy or Eurocentric or white centric, whatever you want to call it. Where we our blind spots need to be talked about all the time. And where we have blind spots, we need to own them and understand them and understand how they affect people. And for instance, Whoopi Goldberg, I could understand how she could say something like that, given her perspective on things. Now, we don't need to destroy her because of, we need to bring her into the fact, you know, to help her understand what reality has got for us. So Rogan had that. And then he had the issue with being excessively provocative with his guest. And, and I want you to think about this. Look at Rogan's guest. He has a guy up there I talked about yesterday that's a, a geophysicist by hobby. He's a he's a collision of worlds hobbyist. Randall, what was his name? Randall Cran Cranston or something? Uh, you can put it up there, Caleb. You looked it up yesterday or, or Thursday or Friday. Uh, and he he Joe Joe talks about Area 51. He talks about evidence of aliens. He talks about he talks about all he wants somebody in that seat that can keep him interested for three or four hours. And you as well. That's his job, keeping you interested for three hours. And you'll see when he's in that sort of zone with these people with outlying opinions, you'll hear him say all the time, whoa, wow, does everybody else know this? Huh, I never thought of that. Oh, my goodness. That's what he That's what he loves. That's what piques his curiosity and keeps him engaged. So to, to Randall Carlson, yeah. So to go after him for doing what he does is – I, it's bizarre to me, but now he has looked at that and gone, you know, you're right. I should should have opinions that balance out some of these extreme opinions. And I would listen to those people too, because I want to try to contextualize some of those extreme ideas. And uh, good, he's going to do that now. So it, things will change. But to, to just try to destroy him because he was curious about things and 
and again, his instinct is if somebody's being silenced or somebody has outlying opinions, he wants to talk to them. He wants to see what's going on. Is that is that that this is a crime in our country? That's I agree with balancing it out, and I'm glad he's going there. Did this all make sense to everybody? Let me look at the restream. Yeah, it did. Um, the, it's just hard, you know, being a public figure and being in a time like this. You know, yeah, um, you Susan. Just, yeah, uh, mock disaster is pointing out that the the group that put together the uh, montage that you were referring to that was outtakes mm -hmm. is a political action committee. Yeah. And maybe there was something behind the stuff I was doing. I, I got there it. was something, and I yeah. think I know who. I'm not going to say no, it there, now. It might be they have to have a lot of money to do that. No, it was I. Why because, would they spend the time and the energy well, editing I, and finding I have and my, searching? My uh, instincts of who it was mm -hmm. because we were getting attacked a lot, and then they just stopped suddenly for a really long time. That person. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the whole yeah. group, and that's no. the political type of thing All right, we'll it see. just you know it's people that aren't happy with you and what you say and stuff and you know that's great whatever you you got us okay so uh mark and alberta about the vitamin d i the reason i'm calling vita, low vitamin d just is a sign of ill health obese people have low vitamin d old people have low vitamin d so it's 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 a marker it's not necessarily causational that's all i'm saying uh can you boost your vitamin d levels and, and improve your health you, you know what Wiss so? Chris did for me? What's that? She's sending me a mermaid dress for, for New Orleans. Wow. Yeah, it's like this spork, sparkly mermaid dress that was hers that she designed, and she's she just sent it to me. So thank you, Chris. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to see it. Well, <laughs> to she, wear with my purple wig or my green screen. wig. Or maybe whatever. she'll uh, come up and show you. It'll be fun. Uh, but here, we let's take a little break. Some <laughs> uh, ads. Our friends at Reframe are sponsoring the show uh, this right now, this month. And uh, let's hear what they have to say. Since the beginning of the pandemic, nearly one in five Americans has reported consuming an unhealthy amount of alcohol. Could be you. But only 10% of them are actually getting the help they need. Reframe is a neuroscience-based smartphone app that helps users cut back or quit drinking alcohol altogether. Using evidence-based tools, techniques, and content, Reframe guides users through a personalized program to help them reach their goals. Comprised of daily tasks, a comprehensive toolkit, a community forum, and accountability guides, Reframe is a modern, accessible, and affordable resource that can help anyone looking to reevaluate their relationship with alcohol. Reframe is backed by Harvard University and Emory University Schools of Medicine, and it is ranked the number one alcohol reduction smartphone app worldwide with over 350,000 downloads. With Reframe, there's no stigma, just science, no labels, just support. To learn more, go to joinreframeapp.com slash Dr. Drew. Use the code Dr. Drew for 25% off your first month or your annual subscription. That's at joinreframeapp.com slash Dr. Drew. Let's talk about our friends at Hydrolyte. I can't say enough about Hydrolyte. You hear me talk about them all the time. It gets me through workouts and medical procedures and colonoscopies and COVID. It absolutely contributed to my recovery from COVID. Hydration is key to feeling healthy, and there's never been a time when that could be more important. We're in the height of cold flu season. Every headache has got you testing for COVID. Staying hydrated can keep the questionable symptoms at bay, and there's nothing better than Hydrolyte to get it done. Taking their hydration formula one step further, now there is Hydrolyte Plus Immunity. It starts with their fast-absorbing electrolytes and adds a host of great ingredients. Plus, each single-serve, easy-pour drink mix contains 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C and 300 milligrams of elderberry extract. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity comes in convenient, easy-pour powder sticks that rapidly dissolve in water to make a great-tasting drink that is a 75% less sugar than your typical sports drink. It uses all-natural flavors. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, caffeine-free, non-GMO, and even vegan. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity is also now available in ready-to-drink bottles at the Walmart next to the pharmacy, or as always, you can find it by visiting hydrolyte.com slash Dr. Drew. That is H-Y-D-R-A-L-Y-T-E dot com slash Dr. Drew. And be sure to use that code Dr. Drew 25 at checkout for a special discount.
We appreciate Dr. Monica Gandhi for stopping by today. And sort of, amazing. She's always amazing. Please follow her on Twitter at Monica Gandhi. I think nine. she's leaving Twitter, right? No, I think I just convinced her to keep putting <laughs> stuff out. She'll not. She'll not see your responses, but you will see the great material. Yeah, she that's puts good. Out. That's good. Uh, I asked uh, somebody to come on up here. It's Ryan. Uh, see, Ryan was actually in the queue yesterday, so I'm glad I could get to him today. But of course, now he's not coming Ryan, up. Ryan. Uh, Ryan. You Let's can get, do uh, it. Josh you back in while we it. wait for Ryan. Uh, Put a couple people up uh, there. That's what and I'm just, doing. That's they, what I'm doing. They stay. Um, unmute your clubhouse. Ah, uh, that's the problem. I it's bet. Drew's fault. <laughs> yep, it is my fault. Ryan, I uh, put you up there, and then uh, also uh, Josh. <laughs> was... Josh hey, Doctor Drew, you made it up and you beat Ryan. So what's going? Oh, Ryan, I'm sorry. Hold Ryan, hold on a second. We'll talk to Josh first. Go ahead, Josh. Mute your, oh. mute your mic. You guys, um, mute, mute so Ryan. Mute your I mic. Just, yeah, I just wanted to see how we could kind of share information without um, kind of being upset. I mean, I was talking yesterday about this dialectic, this Hegel's, mm -hmm. you know, um, thesis, antithesis, mm -hmm. and synthesis. This is something that you brought up, and I just kind of went with it and, mm -hmm. and thought about it. not just anti-Semitism, but racism of all kinds. It, it's It's almost like... And I and I don't want to you know upset anyone listening. It's almost like there, it has to happen. Like it, it they these people need to feel this hate. They have to act sadistically. It's in there. It, it gets them off. It, you know. You know. Freud talked about the 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 sexual drive mm -hmm. and how sadomasochism is actually kind of sexual in nature. And mm -hmm. I think when people hate. There's a, they, they get a rise out of it. Yeah, they it, certainly it, get a reward. It, they certainly that reward system, the amygdala, everything's firing off. And and why that primitive part of the brain needs activation these days is hard to understand. But yeah, I mean you're you're right. They 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 get something from it or they wouldn't do it. And it's it's yeah. it's people at their worst, really when you get right down and to I it. And I think yeah, and I think that, you know, what what is the solution to that? And I think it's love. Because sadomasochism isn't isn't love it looks like love yeah. but it's not no, love it's no. not true love well uh you know i i almost don't know how to how to address that issue except to say that of course of course but how do we <laughs> in a time of such uh aggression i mean aggression is the enemy right and the tr the the impulses of creating an outgroup, that's what creates the ability to be aggressive and to dehumanize somebody. And once we get into those cycles, it was always religion that pulled us out of it. And so some sort of faith, something, I, whatever you need uh, to, to do so. I, I know, uh, Josh, you do a lot of that kind of stuff. I mean, maybe, maybe a more Eastern religious approach would resonate with somebody sometime. I don't know. I, I it, whatever it is, it it doesn't seem to be the fact that there's so much religiosity around what you believe about COVID. That that the the vacuum left by the secularization of our society has been filled with people adopting the same principles, religious principles of apostasy and um, uh, canons and sinfulness and dirtiness and an out group and only one set of principles there you got to believe the the full canon or you're out and both sides do this i'm not saying one side's doing it it's, it's both sides and dr z dog calls it the covidians and the covidiots but the fact that it has such a flavor of what we do with religion is deeply concerning particularly since there's nothing like a concept of love thy neighbor that would normally pull us out of this so I, I think Josh, maybe a real serious leader might get us through this. Somebody who can really help us. I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. We're going to have to see. Maybe people will just fatigue in this. That's kind of what happened in the French Revolution. They just got tired of it. Uh, Ryan, go ahead. You're going to mute your mic now. Hey there. Hey, Dr. Drew. What's happening? I uh, just had a quick question on like, uh, like highest probability of catching COVID. Would it be like uh, in the household if like let's say your wife or husband or whoever had it would that be like your highest probability of catching covid if I, you're out I mean, in like, it, general public no yeah out outdoors very unusual transmission especially if you're wearing a mask it's like ridiculous but but it's it's you don't need to unless you're right up against somebody and then 
the fact it, it, with a mask the transmission rate is like 0.4 percent or something after 20 minutes so obviously un, you know closed rooms rooms without circulation prolonged exposure i mean the, the the issue is duration of exposure that you know how much viremia in the patient and the person who's sick and duration of exposure that's it and, gotcha. vent and ventilation okay. and ventilation if you can have limited yeah. exposure distance ventilation you're going to be fine and if you're vaccinated i mean there you go you're you're in really great shape with whatever the virus has to throw at you okay yeah so I, it's kind of weird my uh me and my wife are both uh double vaccinated she she did the pfizer vaccine i did moderna mm -hmm. um, uh she's caught in covid or she's gotten t uh, covid tw uh, two times she got delta and then she just recently got omicron mm -hmm. um but she didn't pass the virus to me both times and i was like we literally laid in the same bed. We have a one bedroom apartment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Listen, I had, I had terrible, I had, hasn't passed on. I had terrible alpha. My wife didn't get that in spite of being with me through that. Um, and I the, wasn't vaccinated with no vaccine at that point, whole household, uh, vaccinated, but everybody got, uh, Omicron yeah. except Paulina yeah, who were, just had the booster sneezing on everybody who just had the booster. She <laughs> didn't get it, but you know, but it the, was and the immune has it different was efficacy in different people. I no, mean, you, Drew goes, I want to get, I want to get, uh, Omicron for the holidays. No, I said, and I'm not sure. Yeah, later, I, want, I wanted it too. I said, I'm not I sure. I don't it. want it. My wife. But I, I would assume your immunity from the vaccine is, is what's protecting you. I think, I think that's what the, the answer is. The only there. problem is it's not good on paper. You're going to have to get a vaccine before we go out of the country for work. You keep saying that. And, I know and, it because the the airlines are so strict in Bermuda. It's a gateway to the other countries. So yeah, yeah they want you to be, the hotels and stuff. So I'm pretty sure you're going to have to get a booster before. Well, we leave. I wouldn't mind. But can taking, we get that one that Monica yeah, said? Yeah, Covaxin or Novavax. I'd be happy to yeah. take that. Yeah. Uh, Anthony, what's going on there? I was just building upon what you were saying about you can find an answer to why everybody's clinging so hard to their belief systems and actually making it kind of a religious type mm -hmm. of clinging. Mm. It goes back to what I was talking about earlier <clears throat> with my thesis about the it, it's going to get worse as we go along because of the breakdown of the family cycling, the uh, maladaptive family cycling that we have. It's a never ending thing. And it's mental health. I think yeah, that's well, of the course, answer. Of course. And, and childhood trauma. Like I, I think I mentioned to you, I, I wrote a book about narcissism 15 years ago. And I wanted I to, book. and I wanted to put two chapters in about mm -hmm. childhood trauma and where else in history there. I I was saying, look, this amount of childhood trauma, particularly the sexual and physical abuse, is not normal. That is not normal for humanity. This is a pandemic. Mm -hmm. There is that book, The Mirror Effect. It, it is something specifically going on in the '80s, '90s, and early 2000s of this country and certain other Western countries, and 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 certain countries do, do excessive amounts of this stuff too, but. It's not normal. And I wanted to look at other periods of history where there had been essentially pandemics of childhood sexual abuse. And I was going to write about the French Revolution, and I was going to write about the Aztecs and how they solved their problems of aggression. And and I said, you know, eventually the guillotines would come out. And lo and behold, I didn't know about social media, and I didn't know what they would serve as the guillotine, but here we are. And the one, the one thing I would warn everybody about, if you think you can avoid being put up on the guillotine just read your history eventually it, it gets to everybody it just it just that's the way it works it's not it's not like bad people only get put up in, into trouble everybody gets eventually because of retribution and and the you know the absolute purity of, of your thinking must be maintained and it's very easy to say something slightly off and go up on the guillotine whatever you know it's 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 happened before and uh, we need to let it calm down it's i think it's kind of calming down actually in spite of dr gandhi having been the subject of a particularly bad episode recently uh, i think it generally is kind of calming down and it's i think it's because and anthony you tell me if you agree with this i think it's because of people like bill maher speaking up and trying to and saying things that you couldn't say a year ago Joe Rogan exactly. saying things, Dr. Gandhi, Dr. Prasad, they're saying things that you literally could not say a year ago. I'm not sure if they're all aware of it. I'm acutely aware of it that you couldn't say it. And they're saying it. 
and it's 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 they're saying it and it's causing a kind of a oh 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 no how do we i guess we can't attack that it's a synthesis again that's back to josh's thing about the synthesis those those two guys are creating a bit of a synthesis of all this stuff and i think there are other players too that will start doing that and so we'll, we'll see but uh again anthony appreciate your comments uh appreciate all of you guys for uh, participating um those of you on restream i am watching uh we had some more submissions for where is dr drew hashtag where is dr drew if you get your bobblehead and you want to just take some cute pictures of where you are so like you where's waldo um this is Susan's we got some new ones joy. we're gonna show them tomorrow mm -hmm. but if you if you have any have any uh new ones you want to submit put them up tonight and we'll we'll have them on tomorrow's show okay. and hopefully we'll have a 15 minute uh conversation with um heather mcdonald Oh yeah. So and, the, the, you heard about my friend, Heather, she, uh, passed out. She fainted. She was unconscious before she fell. That's why she fell with such, with such force that she developed a skull fracture and a subdural hematoma. And she'll come on and tell you about how she's doing. So I talked to her this morning. I called Mike Carano sent me this video this morning. Did you see it, Drew? No. Okay. I'm going to post it on the restream. It's pretty funny. Don't go to it yet. Wait till after the show. Um, anyways, he did, <laughs> He, he texted me at like 6.30 this morning. So I asked him if he can come on the show tomorrow too. That'd be fun. But um, oh yeah, Mike would be good. It was a video of me when my father passed away and I had to run his hardware store and he came in and he videotaped it. Mm -hmm. And I remember he was walking around with his camera. Of course. And um, um, I heard him. <laughs> I heard him. His wife's kind of hot. <laughs> you were him saying I that? was I I was gonna flirt with her and he goes, Oh, I should cut that part out. <laughs> that was before you knew Mike? No, no, it was during the thing, but it's really cute. Okay. He's so funny. And he goes, I hope I hope this doesn't make you too sad. But I was mm -hmm. like and he's he's been really helpful with Paulina during her sobriety mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. And um, so I invited him tomorrow. Too. Good, but, I love it. But I just put the video up. It's pretty funny. Is he gonna come over here or is he gonna be on I think Zoom? that's like his YouTube channel. Um he, I don't know. I, I haven't gotten back. I said, Hey, we'd love to see you. We're around this week. And he said, okay, I'll come by. But I just asked if you want to come on the show. So look up uh, 10 minutes with Mike or three minutes, with Mike or something. And then, I don't know what the thing is. What is his new? Yeah. Just like Mike Carano, C-A-R-A-N-O. No, it's, um, yeah. So he did this, like, he showed like my dad's store and I was like at, behind the counter, you know, like bringing people Are you up. Put it up on the website. Or I, I just put it on restream for people. On but, restream. Um, Oh, wait, let me see if I can do this. I don't see it. Where did it go? Oh, uh -oh. did I? What did I do? I put my What's calendar. wrong with S'more-esque? What happened there? People are saying something. They're sorry to him or her. Who's that? What? What happened? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Shit. Why isn't this like Um, George yeah. Clark, I, I don't know if that's true, uh, that they're giving a chance for their businesses to adopt, because the businesses would happily adopt instantly. I think they're very quick to adapt uh, when something is. like that is that they don't have to hassle people over. Um, William Vibe, oh, I have been. I have been. Trust me, I have been thoroughly. It's had I'm four just views. sort of getting used to this it. This is, uh, oh, it's not listed. Oh, it's under Mike Carano. He has, he has, um, yeah. Okay. You didn't, I sent it to you this oh, morning. Oh, copy guy at work killed himself. Yeah. Suicides are climbing right now. Oh. I'm going to be on E! News tomorrow talking about that. And, so it's uh, kind of cute. Suicides I don't know. are up. If you want to see what my dad's up. hardware store looked like and when I, bef while we were like liquidating everything and all the things that were inside of it, it's kind of fun. It was kind of fun to see. All right. <clears throat> we'll check it out. Doctor.com, right? Is that where it is? <laughs> and I go, I yell at him. Oh, you have to watch it. It's so funny. <laughs> it's at drdrew.com? Yeah. No, I just put it on the restream thing. If okay, so you have to click to... through on the restream. If you go to our, and how do okay. people get to the restream? If No, they're on the restream. I just I, Not everybody's it. there. How does somebody get there if they're oh, not on the restream? Oh, well, let me see if I can find this thing. This is we'll going to be a podcast too. Own. So uh, Susan, if you send me the link, then I'll post it onto drdrew.com for the this post about. Dr. I think Monica that's Gandhi. the way to do it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm going to share and, it with he'll Caleb. Be in tomorrow. He'll be in tomorrow. Michael being here tomorrow. Oh, you're, you're, he's going to make a podcast out of <laughs> Yeah, well, he makes these five minutes with Mike. Okay, I'm going to tweet it on. Okay, Susan, I'm trying to wrap it up. Uh, everybody good? Caleb, you good? Oh, yeah, doing great. I, uh, Kay, yeah, Casey thinks you sound high, Susan. Are you high? No, <laughs> I have to agree with him. <laughs> so, I'm not high. Okay, I'm just asking. I'm uh, happy today. <laughs> good, and you're rested too. So I'm not really. Oh, you're tired. 
Uh, all right, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, Caleb, thanks for producing I'm this. I'm just glad I'm not cooking tonight. Thank you, Dr. Monica Gandhi, for swinging by uh, and uh, Michelle for scheduling this. We have, uh, as I said, it looks like we're going to have Mike Carano in here tomorrow. Well, I don't know. He hasn't said yes. He'll come in. I, I bet he'll, he's usually good about it. And then on Thursday, Dr. Arthur Kaplan, medical ethicist, to really kind of go over all this stuff to give a sort of an update on what his thoughts are about mandates and things like that. So uh, we'll get into that and also your calls then. We appreciate you guys on Clubhouse. Thank you for being here. And uh, we will see you tomorrow at, uh, I believe, 3 o'clock. See you then. The procedure you had done, like we've said, we did in the <laughs> podcast studio. The same procedure. When he was telling me he was doing it, I felt this familiar, I go, oh, I know this deal already. <laughs> But I also was like, why am I having this happen again on my face this time? You thought it was an ingrown hair to begin with, right? Yeah. I'm going to bet it was. Being hairy is the worst curse that I don't want to hear a woman say anything about her vagina ever again. Be hairy and then talk to me. My friend, this is a burden. Ask Dr. Drew is produced by Caleb Nation and Susan Pinsky. As a reminder, the discussions here are not a substitute for medical care, diagnosis, or treatment. This show is intended for educational and informational purposes only. I am a licensed physician, but I am not a replacement for your personal doctor, and I am not practicing medicine here. Always remember that our understanding of medicine and science is constantly evolving. Though my opinion is based on the information that is available to me today, some of the contents of this show could be outdated in the future. Be sure to check with trusted resources in case any of the information has been updated since this was published. If you or someone you know is in an immediate danger, don't call me, call 911. If you're feeling hopeless or suicidal, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800 800- 273-8255. You can find more of my recommended organizations and helpful resources at drdrew.com slash help.